I spent a lot of time on my channel talking about physical media, but today we're going to be focusing only on Bandcamp releases that I have found interesting over the last couple of months. Bandcamp Friday comes up, I want to give you some suggestions to throw on your wish list so that you can give 100% of the proceeds to the artist once uh, the time comes. I found some killer, killer shit on Bandcamp over the last couple of months, and I want to give you just a, just a tiny little clump of homework for you to do. So, like, I have been just drooling, drooling at the mouth about the idea of of shooting this video just completely surrounded around the idea of telling you guys about Vinter Cree. I have been absolutely floored by this thing. It's mostly all I listened to for about a month straight or so. So Vinterkrieg is this band from Stockholm, Sweden, and they recorded only one demo back in 1997 at Abyss Studios. I know, let's not get into it. But this thing is such a lost treasure. I'm not sure if it was released at all back in 1997, but it was recorded and written during that time period. And it is such a artifact timepiece of just one of my absolute favorite time periods in metal, in all of music. This thing is just so indicative of a lost time, and it is so insanely satisfying to hear something from back in that time period that just has all the trappings of all the albums that I just dream about day after day after day, and I had never heard it before. So. My friend Tommy Nagarufa released this on cassette, limited to 100 copies. And I believe the jury is still out, I believe there is still something in the works to release this on CD, maybe LP, we will see. But the tape sold out like that before I even knew what this was. But you can still get it on Bandcamp, of course. Um, it's in some Swedish stuff, it's called Harshkar over yeah, um, it's it's actually a, like a quick EP, um, four or five songs. But if you like dissection, swordmaster, the moaning, sorehin, all that stuff, it's it's right here in this demo. It's got cheesy female vocals, lots of stupid bombastic chord keyboards a la Emperor all over the place. Just kind of checking my notes here. Yeah, five songs, one little like interlude. Uh, the songs are like six to seven minutes long, but oh my God, it's such a satisfying artifact of 1997. I get so excited about 1997, I'm sorry. I'm, I know you get sick of hearing me talking about it, but this thing is incredible. Buy it at once. By the way, what you're hearing in the background is something newer. It just came out. My friend uh, Tyler, who plays in Rue Basal, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, um, is this black metal band out of Alaska. And they've been working on this material for the last couple of years. And they put out um, kind of a demo um, EP kind of thing maybe last year or so. And it was very, very, no, it was an EP, yeah. Um, very, very promising. Had just lots of strong, mighty riffs. And it's 
kind of hard to talk about this project without mentioning Eternus for contrast and similarity. So maybe the most striking, I think, personality trait of Rubezal's music is that it's very triumphant, frolicking, droving, mighty, bombastic black metal. But it's so mighty and strong that it has these kind of death metal kind of vocals. And like that brings to mind the gods, Eternus. And I'm sure Eternus influenced these guys quite a bit. But where Eternus, I think, uh, did a really great job of having these kind of more serene riffs um, and kind of let the drums be the driving force uh, of their style. I think it was an interesting interplay and contrast in Eternus's case where the drummer was just beating the fuck away out of these rhythms while the guitars were really just atmospheric and, and mournful. Rubezal, by contrast, uh, have a very, very interesting, more mighty Viking kind of way about them. It's so satisfying and good. Uh, and this record just came out a couple of weeks ago. It's called Remnants of Grief and Glory. It's on Bandcamp. I think they're working on physical. Uh, try to find a, a little label to release that. So, like, what I love about doing these Bandcamp videos is, like, like we're coming in at the ground floor on all this stuff. And it's kind of a level playing field for many, many, many artists. Um, so it's interesting to kind of see, like, how well received a lot of these releases are. Uh, because a lot of the times there's, like, no physical release or... In some bands' cases, they'll do like a really, really limited physical release. In the case, pretty often of black metal bands, sells out right away, which kind of like start, sparks the flame of the hype, and then things kind of take off from there. So that by the time you find out about it, it's sold out in physical, but you can still enjoy it on Bandcamp, or there's a chance for a repress further up the road if you're just patient enough. Uh, but, you know, none of that stuff really uh, has any bearing on the quality of the releases that are coming out on Bandcamp. I think that's such a, a huge revolution in uh, our genre and in, like, my chief interest is that just there's so much incredible stuff coming out. Uh, it, the platform enables artists to just release crap or release amazing, amazing, amazing stuff that you can just kind of have plop into your lap it, it is so easy to find you can use the social part of it I don't know I don't have to like sell you guys on Bandcamp I feel like they're doing pretty good but I really really am emphatic about the platform it's brown ale season fellas Maduro so Rubezal really really stunning debut I'm really really stoked for them I have known the drummer who I think we go back as far as like 2005 somewhere around there yeah I'm getting distracted by how good these riffs are and like these ride patterns he's he's a drummer I think who whose influences are, are very similar to mine not that I'm an amazing drummer at all but like he plays drums in a way that I would and it's really really fun to hear uh, him fully realizing those ideas in just a great, super talented band. So check out Rue Basal. It's gonna be to your liking. Um, for some death metal now, I want to highlight a band that I saw live in Chicago a couple of months ago, and they absolutely wiped the floor with everybody. So Mulder uh, played with uh, Cryptum and the Nucleus and uh, what was the other one? Rotted. Um, and it was it was really, really fun. It was kind of a diverse bill, which I liked. Uh, and I didn't really know anything about Mulder, but they just completely wrecked me. I was banging my fucking head the, for the entire set. The guys performed so fun. It was so fucking entertaining and just it was so hard to resist the amount of fun that these guys were having on stage. And their songs are exactly in that style. It literally sounds like 
Martin Van Drunen singing with like autopsy, a lot of S fix kind of stuff going on there, a lot of death, a little bit of cannibal corpse here and there, but these guys are taking an old school template, playing modern death metal and doing it so, so fucking well. great live and my buddy even turned to me and said they're way better live than they are an album but I've gone back and listened to Vanished Cadavers um, fairly regularly and it just fucking smokes it's so goddamn good and they're promising to have a follow up to that album that just fucking blows everyone away this could be the next thing with Sugarbog if that does anything for you but it's different um, I just feel like these guys are really sitting on a bomb and they're gonna blow up huge once they finally release whatever the follow-up to Vanished Cadavers might be. It's so good. Um, the CD was sold out from the band camp, so is the LP and the tape, but I actually just found a copy of the CD on uh, some distro by using the metal detector, which you should all have bookmarked. Um, yeah, Mulder, Vanished Cadavers. Mm, mm. It's, it's really a reincarnation of uh, Martin Van Druden all the way. So the next release that I would like to highlight for you is really hard to pronounce. And they're from Sweden. And they sound like 90s Swedish black metal. Am I a broken clock or what? Um, so the band is called Eskimergament. And the album... Uh, it's the debut. So I guess there was like a demo version of this album and then they did like a full length version of it. I'm not at all familiar with the demo version of it. But it's a bunch of words and the band name is in the title. Link down below for you to check out. And if you sleep on this thing, I, there's no hope for you. I was not prepared for any black metal release in this year to surprise me as much as this fucking thing has. And here on Bandcamp, it's telling me that there are only 66 people with this album in their collection. I don't know if that means a lot of people preferred physical. It did come out on LP and CD. You can get the LP on Amazon for 20 bucks. I'm really tempted to get it. But there's, no, there's nothing like this thing. I'm increasingly annoyed by black metal these days with like unintelligible riffing. Like you gotta bring riffs to the table, and that's one thing. Like you'll find ties all these releases together um, in this video is that riffs, riffs, riffs are essential for my enjoyment. That's just what it's gonna come down to. I love tons of different styles of different ideas and experimentation. When it comes down to it, I need riffs. <laughs> so every one of these releases has bone smoking fucking riffs all day long. And this es Eskimergament is no slouch whatsoever. Totally harkens back to a lot of 90s kind of stuff. Um, there's a lot of atmospheric interlude kind of stuff that's just every bit as good as some of Summoning's better moments. But, but I really have a hard time putting the needle on the donkey's tail to say that this sounds like this band or this band. Eskimergament is very reminiscent of a lot of 90s stuff and just tying in a lot of different tropes and things that I love about the Swedish style from back in the day. <clears throat> but again, it's very modern. It's very uh, fully realized in their own originality. Um, some notes, it sounds like the band is kind of trying to be uh, undercover incognito and they don't want people to know what other projects they're in, but cats out of the bag, uh, members of Stilla and Cethereal, which are pretty great Swedish bands. 
I've only listened to this a few times, and each time I was just utterly stunned. And I, I couldn't really, um, I couldn't tell you this is like the drummer of this or the guitar player of this, sounds like the vocalist of this, whatever. Um, it's not really worth picking apart that that much. It stands on its own so damn well. Let me check, make sure this is a full length. This did remind me, actually, this did remind me quite a bit of that um, Guardgaster album that came out a couple of years ago on Profound Lore. I thought that was mm, overhyped quite a bit. Yeah, this is a full length. Six tracks, nine minute long songs, six, seven, and nine minute long songs. It's a it's a full, full listen. It, I, I'm just at a loss for words to describe how incredible this Eskimergaman is. It's jaw-droppingly good. It is sold out on uh, their Bandcamp page. But guys, only 66 people have this in their Bandcamp collection? you got to get on this. I will say, I think the... So I had this in my wish list for a really long time, and I slept on it for quite a while because I thought the logo was pretty boring, and I thought the album cover was eh, kind of whatever. It looked kind of half-assed, and I figured the music was pretty much on par with that. Um... Had no idea they were from Sweden until I got into listening to it. It was like instantly um, ascertainable that you could tell they were from Sweden. Uh, it's a truly remarkable release. It's going to be on a, a lot of your end lists, I think. Uh, but yeah, it looks like a lot of people are really sleeping on this thing. So check out Eskimergament. Uh, the words that are the album title or whatever. So good. But sticking with Black Metal, another release I've found just crushed me in every way imaginable. The band is called Fables, and it's a solo project of a member of Voltaic Omen, which I'm not very familiar with as far as I know. I may be forgetting that I have heard a Voltaic Omen release at some point. Um... It is a project out of uh, Folsom, California, and it's a full-length demo that was released on LP and sold out in two minutes, so it is gone, 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 and I think a limited cassette as well, um, but that's why I love Bandcamp. You still get to hear it and enjoy it and uh, have it in your collection and support the artist, which is also an important factor here, but holy just utterly insane black metal um i do think it's kind of like cut from the same root uh, and kind of drawing upon the same kind of influences as things like zaster and maybe even more so leviathan uh it's really got this like just kind of inner sanctum mental anguish sort of insanity sound to it going on it's got a very very interesting and stark uh Kind of sound quality to it it's very unique um, and I think the idea of all these kind of contrasting and experimental ideas are really brought home and sold to you by the vocals which are seriously impressive it's just wild howling crazy cavernous vocals all over the place he'll it's, it's so enigmatic and so like theatrical uh, in a lot of ways, he'll, he'll bust out these just wails that sound like King Diamond, but just it never ends. Like he just starts at a wail from down here, and it just keeps shrieking up to the fucking heavens. It's nuts, dude. Is seriously talented, and I, I kind of wish I was more familiar with Voltaic Omen to be able to kind of use that as a contrast. But I'm really not whatsoever, as far as I know. But this thing is. Wholly unique and interesting. Um, I was not expect I was not expecting this thing to blow me away as much as it did. Uh, it's just called Demo One. Um, haven't really dove much into the lyrics or the uh, the themes of the album whatsoever. Um, it's got a really cool cover, and I really really like the logo that they're pulling off here. But man, what an interesting band! 
there's a song called On Feeble On Feeble Legs I Grovel and Howl for a Light That Does Not Shine. I love that title. A proselytizing march of indignities and mania. Like that really, really paints a picture of like what this sounds like. It, it's very, very like mental anguish crying out to I don't know. It just it just sounds like absolutely insane howling and it's very very satisfying and it's got riffs it's very very cool um there i think another thing that kind of drives home it's like style is that like the rhythms will just turn on a dime you'll have a really really fast nasty intense part and then it'll just kind of like fall into this drawn out long kind of uh more atmospheric part to it uh it's just really really diverse and really immersive of, of a listen Check out Demo 1 by Fables. You will not be sorry. I promise. Have I led you wrong yet? Um, two more. So another one that's kind of way different than the last two. Uh, this band is called Mutilatred, and they're from Columbus, Ohio. Um, and I've been playing this quite a bit. It's really, really just like chunky, gnarly, filthy, filthy fucking grindy death metal, deathy, grindy kind of stuff. There's a lot of bands right now coming out that are kind of towing the line between grindcore and death metal, and I think it's really, really fun, and it's nigh time that we kind of reimagine that border between those two genres and kind of blend the two up quite a bit. Um, it's fun. I love a lot of old grindcore. I love, I love like kind of like that that similarities between like Terrorizer and more of an angel, things like that. I love it. So Mutilatred, um, they're like really, really short, fast songs, two minutes or so. The EP is called Ingested Filth, and it's just got like six songs on it. And as I listened to it, I was, remind, I was reminded quite a bit of Sanguine Sugarbug, um, because mainly the drummer does a great job of like, just, just giving you candy, just, dicing up the fucking rhythms over and over and over again. It's really, really fun, and his snare sound is super, super good. But I was actually kind of surprised to find, A, that the drummer from Sangu Sugarbog is not in this band, but the guitar player is. And I wouldn't say I like necessarily recognize the guitar playing in Mutilatred as being similar to Sangu Sugarbog. They're, they're pretty similar, or pretty dissimilar, I'm sorry. Uh, this has got a lot more of a uh, um, kind of, I guess, dumbed down, sort of simplistic, grindy kind of style to it. And that's also kind of helped out by the just nasty, utterly grimy snare sound on this thing. Just fucking rips holes through skin. This thing is so fun. And Justin Phil, check that one out. And lastly, Another favorite I've been listening to over the couple of last couple of months. I believe this came out at the start of the year. The band was called Autumn Fall, and I. <laughs> Fall pretty closely. He's been releasing a couple of singles over the last couple of years, EPs that were pretty promising that I actually listened to quite a bit. Um, but finally, he's released a full length album and it's called Ghosts of Light. The first thing you need to know about Autumn Fall is that this is the guitar player from Fall of the Leaf. And if you don't know what Fall of the Leaf is, you need to get on it. This is just if you want to understand how great melodic black metal can be kind of a little bit of death metal let's let's not go too far and say full-on black metal because i feel like you're gonna 
run down a path that you feel like you already know, this is a little bit of the death metal style. Um, But uh, Fall of the Leaf were this incredible band from Finland in the late 90s um, who had this style of utterly orgasmic tremolo riffing and harmonies that just never ended. It was so just astral and spacey and atmospheric sounding. Um, it just sounded so autumnal and wonderful. They had two albums, August Vernica and um, Evanescent, Evanescent Ever Fading. Uh, which may be my favorite of those two. And so he has like said, I want to continue the style of those two albums, and that is what Autumn Fall is all about. I feel like the band kind of has this kind of forgettable band name. Um, Autumn Fall is kind of like samey with a lot of other like Death Doom or kind of stuff. So I feel like this could get looked over quite a bit because of that. And the album cover on this thing, Ghosts of Light, just doesn't really do much of anything for me. But the music on this thing is just so, so great. If you are a fan of Obsequiae whatsoever, which I really am, and you're interested in like understanding what influences the style of Obsequiae, this right here, Autumn Fall, Ghost of Light. Yeah, you can't go wrong. So if you are you were blown away by that last Obsequiae album, like lots of other people were you gotta check out this Ghost of Light by Adam Fall it's so so good and even I know Tanner from Obsequia I would tell you gotta check this out if you're at all a fan of his stuff so far I believe it's only digital um, no physical release that I'm aware of but um, I, I would expect if the hype kind of builds after a while it may be out on physical but yeah, not yet. Uh, let's see, how many people have this? Only 39 people have this Autumn Fall album in their collection. It's an absolute travesty. So, there's a handful of stuff for you to check out. Put it in your wish list, and then next Bandcamp Friday, I think they're still doing that. I don't really keep up with it as well as I used to. Um, my internet connection here has really, really slowed my streaming capabilities, as we've spoken of before, but a bunch of great Bandcamp stuff out there just waiting for you to check it out so get on it and check it out if you're interested in looking at the rest of my wish list and like things that might be upcoming in my next Bandcamp rundowns you can follow me down there at uh, Ben Smasher and we'll see you next time that was a great video and it was made possible mostly by me but also thanks to the never-ending undying love and support of my patreon subscribers some of whom are if you would like to be a part of supporting my channel and encouraging me to make more content that's as good as the one you just watched join the patreon it's six dollars and 66 cents a month and uh i would appreciate your support thanks for watching either way